Hey, good morning, guys. I slept in a little bit today. I don't know why I was so tired, um, but this morning I did not wake up until like 5.45, and then it's just been like, go, 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 go. And I started wondering, I was like, hmm, why in the world would I be so tired? And then it hit me. I wasn't tired. I was resting up for a birthday that we have today. Today, guys, is Aubrey's birthday. So if you would please join me in cha-cha-cha happy happy birthday singing to our very own Miss Aub. You ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday dear Aubrey. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Ooh la la. Stick your head in hot lava. Ha ya. Eat more chicken. Happy, happy birthday to my Ob. I love you to pieces. And I'm so sorry that we could not celebrate you in the classroom, but we are all celebrating you on our video. And I send all of my loves right to you, sweet pea. Mwah. So guys, in honor of Aubrey's birthday, today we are going to read a book that was actually written when Miss Earnhardt was born. Mm -hmm. It's an old book. So today, guys, we have been talking about butterflies and ladybugs and frogs and the life cycle of us. We've been talking about a lot of life cycles. And now, yesterday, we talked about how ladybugs help organic farmers, how they will eat the aphids off the leaves and off the produce that they are wanting to plant. And then, therefore, the farmers do not have to use the pesticides and such that they would if the uh, ladybugs were not there. So guys, this is a beautiful book. Oh my goodness, it just warms my heart to read to you. It is called The Reason for a flower. Now, sweet loves, we have definitely spoken about some of the things in this book already. We've talked about, uh, not in, in these videos, but just in the classroom, the importance of bumblebees. Remember the bumblebees go from flower to flower and they get pollen on their little pollen sacks on the back of their legs. And then they go from flower to flower and that's how the flowers grow. Some of the birds that we have seen, especially in Arizona, we have beautiful hummingbirds. And so that is going to be in this book as well. Let's turn it on the back cover and see. Oh, we still have some hummingbirds and the uh, bumblebees as well. And it looks like they are zipping and zooming around some hibiscus and around some roses. So hibiscus have those beautiful, um, I believe that they are the pistons. Mm, I'm going to have to review that when we talk about the life cycle of a plant. So that is where a hibiscus keeps its pollen. So that way it's easily accessible for all those plants or for all those birds and bugs. So sweet pea, this is the Reason for a Flower by Ruth Heller. And I don't, I, I'm assuming that she is the author and the illustrator since there is just one name. But let me look on the cover or on the title page. Let me see if this, it says, mm -hmm. copyright 1983, that's the year I was born, by Ruth Heller. So I assume that she is the author and the illustrator. And here is the title page. Oh, look, that's one of Miss Earnhardt's favorites. That's a walnut. I think it may be a peach pit. Let's see. Birds and bees. I all oh, look at these illustrations, guys. This 
is why I wanted to read this book to you today because seriously, they are just so beautiful. And these, look at those butterflies and moths, guys. Oh my goodness. I am so excited for you to see this book. And these sip nectar from the flowers. Now, this actually looks like a cactus bloom and but i i don't know if it is or not but we definitely have these in arizona too we have little brown bats that will fly especially now that the swarrow are opening their blooms they're get, or they're getting ready to open these brown bats will go around and they will drink the nectar and they will help pollinate as well and as they search for more and more pollen from the flower go before goes the next one they will explore. So they take pollen from flower to flower and that's called pollination. Taking a little bit from this flower and taking it to this flower and then those two flowers pollen goes to this flower and this flower and this flower. It is a beautiful cycle. I love it. Some pollen travels in the breeze without the help of birds or bees and very often makes you sneeze. I don't know about you, but Miss Earnhardt has definitely had itchy eyes and it is because of the pollen in the air. Because it's spring in the desert, a lot of these plants are, re are releasing their pollen and their, their uh, little seeds and everything and it is definitely making for some itchy eyes. From the anther on a stamen, so this is your anther this little bitty part that has the pollen, and the stamen is the stem of that anther that holds it up, to a stigma on a style. So that's going to be this very, very top part, and then the style is the stem that holds it up. Pollen grains must travel and stay a little while, and then you'll see the reason. Oh my goodness, I love showing you these illustrations because look at what's next this is why i chose to read this for aubrey's birthday look at all those colors and aubrey was always so good with her color oh my goodness for each flower even weeds the reason for a flower is to manufacture manufacture what do you think that means the reason for a flower is to manufacture. Manufacture means to make. It means to make something. Seeds that have a cover of one kind or another. Some grow inside a juicy fruit, and it's not odd to find them growing a pod. The largest ones, a coconut. Did you know that a coconut is a seed? Isn't that huge? That's like the size of our heads. But then there's some that are teeny, teeny, tiny. The man cub would uh, wanted a watermelon the other day, so we were picking out watermelon seeds. And then do you remember, this was a chunk picture that we worked on at a long time ago. And it was the, on the inside of an avocado, the it pit. Seeds travel far and wide. Some even like to hitch a ride upon a bike or a shoe. Squirrels hide them and forget they do. Some have burrs that stick to furs and travel on at a gallop. So a lot of times, guys, we are carriers of seeds. They will stick to our clothes or they will stick to our shoelaces and then we carry them around too. Seeds can settle anywhere they find water, sun, and air because they're living creatures. We know this. They are living things. And then grow roots and stems and leaves. It's time to start planting. Has your family planted a garden? If so, show me a picture. Some seeds grow up to the trees.
Grimford's favorite. These grow where it's very dry. Especially if this is correct, this is a pal no, a Santa Rita cactus. Those are the purple ones that you see a lot of times, like around grocery stores and stuff. And they have the most beautiful blooms. I love Santa Rita cactus blooms. And these grow where it's wet, like on the lily pads with the frogs. These may not look like flowers, but they're the most important yet. Rice and barley, corn and wheat are cereals we need to eat. Millet and bamboo are a treat for... Oh, what animal do you know eats bamboo? Oh, look at that. Animals who do not eat meat. So do you remember a long time ago, let me set the book down. We talked about the different kinds of animals that eat different things. We have the carnivores and then the animals that do not eat meat. Remember, they have those flat teeth and those are the herbivores. And then humans are, they have both. They have the flat teeth and the shark teeth and those are omnivores. Good job. So all of these animals do not eat meat. They are herbivores and so they need these grains these seeds to grow so that they can eat they are called herb herbivorous or herbivores would you believe these plants eat meat and they are called carnivorous look at that like your um Venus fly traps and your pitcher plants, they actually eat the bugs that fall inside of them. I wonder if they've ever eaten a ladybug. Probably. Good morning, Mantha. <laughs> the largest flower ever found grows in the jungle near the ground. A parasite clings tight to roots of trees that feed it. It's three feet wide or maybe four weighs 15 pounds and sometimes more, and has a nasty odor. Ladybugs stink too. Um, now I'm going to try and use a strong brain and sound this out. I'm gonna chunk it out. Raffelsia is its name. So I apologize if I mispronounced that. I'll have to look that up. Isn't it nice when you can admit that you don't know how to do something and then you can ask for help? That is a great way, guys, to have a happy heart and to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But here's a flower that owns its fame to the smelling very sweet. The scientists agree that magnolias seem to be a his pretty historic family. I love magnolias. My mama had a magnolia tree in her front yard. All flowers are angiosperm. That's an ancient Grecian term. Here are just a very few products made from them for you. So paper and straw, candy and wood, tea, popcorn, chocolate, pasta, perfume, bread, cork, rope, rubber, medicine, and cotton are all made from products of plants. Guys, that's a big deal. Plants are pretty stinking important. Plants that have no flowers are fascinating too. And look, I'm gonna show you what is on that mushroom. Mm-hmm. It's a ladybug. This one has become a plum. It starts out as a flower and we're going, we learned just like with the life cycle of an apple, it starts out as a flower and then the middle breaks off and it starts growing into a plum. Same life cycle. So dear ones, I hope that you enjoyed this book today. Aubrey, again, happy, happy birthday. I love you guys. 
I hope that I will see you again tomorrow. And guys, remember, if you have not logged into that Google Classroom, please go ahead and do so because that's where we are going to be putting a plethora of our materials. So parents, thank you so much for logging on. My guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.